Hey guys, welcome back here. Uh, today I'm doing a, a couple cool things. So, um, the surprise that I'm going to be having at the end of this episode, uh, well, actually, might not be at the end of this episode, but what it's going to go on is I'm trading two holsters for something that I do in my spare time. So, if you don't know and if you don't follow me on Facebook and whatnot, I am a motor fanatic. I love Mopar and this and that. So, I am trading two holsters for something that I'm doing to my 1991 Dodge Stealth. So I picked up a Stealth and I'm doing a pretty ridiculous um, engine swap in it. So uh, I talked to the gentleman and he said that he wants to uh, just take two holsters and trade for this item. So uh, we're gonna make these holsters, we're gonna deliver them because uh, he actually lives right down the road for me. And uh, the cool part is, is yeah, we're actually going to, uh, I'll show you what I traded these holsters for. So uh, I'm actually pretty excited. So no bells and whistles. They're just two pancake style OWBs. One for the Ruger LC9 and one for the um, Taurus G2. And um, these are just going to be two pancake styles with loops. So nothing extravagant, but uh, they will get the job done. So I'm going to walk you through step by step on how to do each of these holsters. So for now, we're going to start with the Ruger. Uh, if you notice... The way these come fully blocked is exactly how you see it. Now this is from uh, Multi Molds with Tony Katner. Uh, you can find these on holstersmith.com. This is where I get all my molds if I need to buy any. Uh, if you notice the um, slide release and the safety. So the safety is blocked off, but the slide release isn't. Now from experience, that little gap right there in the press of my, uh, or the force of my press will cause Kydex to go down in there and it just doesn't work. So um, I have this little piece of wood. It's MDF wood that I have cut and I have shaped it to just sit in there and it gives it a little step down and another channel. So literally all I do at this point is I'll just go over it just like that and not have a problem. So at this point, we'll just go ahead and put our tape on. So five layers there and then you'll notice what I'll do is I'll figure out where that is cut it straight across. That way we could go ahead and get that nice crisp line that we want. And then this just folds over and it does its own thing. So that side is done. Now there's this side. Fifth one I'm doing a hair longer so I can just go ahead and wrap it around. Alright. So outside the waistband holsters, I like to put a little channel, uh, or at least open up the mouth of the holster for it's easier to find it when you're reholstering. You don't have to do it. Some people don't like it. Uh, some manufacturers won't do it. I like to do it, so therefore, I do do it. And it's as easy as this. And when we cut the holster, we cut it right here. So that's it. And then for a blocking plate, uh, I cut these um, random shapes out. This one's gonna be used for the Taurus, as you can see right there. And then this one is gonna be used for this guy. So it's literally just gonna be just like that. So we'll take a piece of tape. Hit that right there, make sure it's in the middle. And then I like to do a couple pieces just to help it stay centered. And this is literally all set for it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this, and while this is in the press, we're gonna prep the uh, the torse. So uh, I'll load this up, get this all set, and we'll start the other one. Now that the uh, LC9 is in the press, we're going to do the same thing for the Taurus. Now, if you notice, I got that block again because that little indent right there will definitely cause a uh, hiccup in the holster. So, as long as it's taller than the slide release, we don't care. So, a rail. I like to cover the rail, as you know. So, I use uh, those guys. These are called uh, rail covers um, or ladder bars. You could call them anything you want, really. But they're the hard plastic that go over a rail um, so you don't cut up your thumbs or your fingers when you're uh, holding a rifle. So they work perfectly for blocking out the channel. And uh, I, I've always used them and I absolutely love them. So we're going to go ahead and do this one. I'm running low on this guy. Oh, looks like a Home Depot trip soon. Oh, 
Ah, this purple stuff stinks. If you're getting, if you use um, painter's tape, this purple stuff is atrocious, but apparently it's all I have. Um, the, the lighter blue stuff is great. So, but we'll have to have to deal with it. So that's what, three? Four, five. Again, cut it so you can get a nice indent right there. And then I just let this kind of hang, mainly because it's going to get pushed down anyway. And onto the side, which again, there's nothing to it. Pretty excited to show you guys what I'm trading these for. I'm super stoked. Guy's a pretty cool guy, and like I said, he lives right down the road from me, same town. So I'll just grab, jump in the truck, and go get it. Um, so that plate, I need another one of those plates. Uh, I don't know where my other one is, but luckily enough, this guy came out of the press and it looks good. Yeah, I like that. So the LC9. Yeah, see our side channel, or not the side channel, the um, accessory channel. Man, that looks great. I like it. Looks good for foam. Not so bad. All right, so we'll set that aside real quick. I might have another one of those bars in here. Oh, I definitely like doing them, and I do. Is ready to go so again simple black these are uh, 8 by 8 inch and they're 0.08 thick so we'll heat these up and give it a good press and be good to go so meanwhile while that's heating up and getting worked to we'll work on this guy get our contour gauge out again you can get it at Home Depot for like 10 bucks, they're not that expensive. Uh, I usually go to where the trigger guard starts to bend up, and so we're gonna start here and go straight across. Generally ends where that begins, or at least runs across it. It's usually how it's been going. You don't wanna go too low because your, your uh, holster's gonna flop. All right. And then we're gonna follow up. We're gonna put a full sweat shield on this. This guy, we angle it just a little bit more and cut it to there. So this is going to have one and a half inch loops. So we'll mark them, or place them where we want. I mark the outline, draw the mounting hole, outline, mounting hole. Okay. Take our drill guide. I only draw two because it's a waste of time and pencil to do the third one. Got those. And then I always have the bottom open. Main reason you want dirt, debris, water all to come out. So this is going to go like so. We'll have the retention point there. And we'll clamp 
these guys. These clamps right here that I use, they're uh, from Home Depot. Um, part number is 702006. They are literally a dollar a piece, and I, I have like 10 or 12 of them. So they work phenomenal. I highly recommend them. So, drilling. have to bust it apart only to get the uh, the mold out <laughs> doesn't want to come out we have the technology there it is and since it's all pretty much fused right here it's great I don't have to uh, to cut the insides, but I will throw a clamp thing right there, and then we'll go ahead and drill. A retention point. Check the. Uh... All right, we're at 242 degrees, which is pretty good. I heat both up at the same time. You've seen other videos on that. We want a nice clean hole. Make sure there's no debris on the inside. There is. Either remove the two pieces all the way, or just get your exacto in there and then cut them out. Either way works. I also ordered uh, more tools. I got more tools coming in, so once they come in, I'll set them up and and show you guys. I'm pretty excited about them. So, but anyways, get that retention bushing in. Slotted post. Check the heat. 340. Right. Oh, hit my camera. Alright, so at this point, we are ready to do uh, the rivets. So, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to wait until uh, I do both of them at the same time. Um, that way, it's just even through and don't have to keep setting up and whatnot. So we're at 333 degrees, so we're almost ready for the other one. So I'll get that in the press and uh, we'll come back. In the voila. So the G2C looks absolutely pisser. Uh, you couldn't you couldn't really ask for better. So again, this is uh, on foam and that's that's incredible. So can't see any of the uh, tape lines. It looks great. Looks great. Looks good. And you see where the uh, I put the um, the rail for the uh, or the rail cover. Yeah, it looks great. So again, let's get this party started. Make sure perpendicular. Get that line in there. Same thing as the LC9, full sweat shield, come down, we're going to come here, pull right there. This will have one and a half loops. So I saw a question I had earlier, I wasn't able to respond because YouTube's not showing me the comment, but I can see it in my notifications. Um, 
So as far as width, if you go too far in, when you angle it, you're going to hit your holster. If you go too far out, your holster's a mile wide and it just feels like crap, looks like crap and whatnot. So literally what I'll do is I'll run just a small gap in between. So pretty much like the gap of your pencil in between uh, where the, the holster, or not the holster, but the firearm ends or where the sight channel ends. So that seems like a pretty good distance that. So that's what I do. And I've always been doing it. You just want to make sure like on a OWB with like a, a flashlight or something that you have enough room to clear the retention pad. Otherwise you, when you form the ears, you bend the retention pad and then just doesn't really work for you. Drilled. Sound like me, I usually drill first before I clean. side. And retention plate is in. All the hardware and ready for rivets. I'll say for those of you that don't know, this is an Arbor Press. You could get them at, you can get them online, Amazon, Harbor Freight. This particular one I bought from Harbor Freight like three years ago. Never had an issue with it. Bolted right to the desk, and uh, you could get these jigs right here online at Knife Kits. Bottom one sits here, and then this slides in and out, so you have like you know the perfect uh, press. But I found it's much quicker to do it without it and I've never you don't, you don't really mess them up it's very hard to mess these up unless you do them upside down but even still find the hole once it goes in there jam it you can spit on it first if you want to it usually goes in better
All right, we have both holsters cleaned up and uh, shaved and sanded, the whole shebang. Now they're ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and grab our heat gun. Um, I don't think I've ever explained my heat gun in any video, but I have a DeWalt. What model is it? D26950. And uh, it's adjustable, so it could go from uh, zero, no heat, to uh, 1,800 degrees. And uh, it's pretty ridiculous. Oh, it's, this one says 1,100. The one I used to have was 1,800. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, 1,100. And when I do this, I have it at about three quarters up. So you can see, that's the setting I have this on. If you go too hot, too quick, or stay in one spot, you will burn it. So, again, I line up the top of the rivets to the top of the jaw. Let me go ahead and heat it up. Oops. I need it. Don't stay in one spot. Go back and forth. Do it for a little bit, and then back and forth, and then same thing. Uh, that way you don't get that uh, burned Tidex look. Because that's never a good thing. I do have a uh, strip heater coming in, should be delivered tonight, and uh, once I set that up and start using it, I'll show you guys how I use that. Just another way to, to bend Kydex. Don't want to go too far. Good. Move on to the next one. This is the uh, the Taurus, the G2C. Awesome. Sadly, my camera mount broke. So now I gotta do this by hand. Anyway, so I went ahead and uh, I completed these holsters. So I got the hardware on, lasered them. So the next time you see these two guys, I'm gonna give them to the new owner. And uh, we are making a deal and trading for something that I really want and need for a project I'm doing. So you will see that probably soon. I'm gonna see if I could uh, contact them, see if he has any time this weekend. But, uh, those are two standard OWB holsters. Happy bending.